question we get pretty regularly is, should I allow pets at the property? Um, it's a great question. It's a question we get all the time. Now, obviously, if you have a, an, a true allergy and you ever think you're gonna be moving into this property, that in itself is a good reason not to allow pets. What I found to be the hesitation, which makes perfect sense, nobody wants the damage that pets can cause to the property, right? And why don't people want damage? Because damage ultimately results in cost. So we want to keep the cost down. We want to reduce our liability. And that makes perfect sense. What we don't often consider is what is the cost of not allowing pets in the property? Let me explain that a little bit. Recent surveys suggest that 60% or more of American citizens or just people in general own one or more pets. If we were to exclude pets from your property and we said no pets allowed, uh, we have eliminated more than half of the people who are interested in your property. So what does this mean? This means increased days on market. This means that instead of us being able to lease your house out in let's say 20 or 30 days, it may take 40 or 60 days to lease your property out. So what does that cost? Um, so that's a consideration. The other thing is that the apartment industry has done a phenomenal job of training uh, tenants to expect to pay pet rent each month per pet. So in addition to decreasing your days on market, increasing the amount of rent you'll receive, we can also charge and people are willing and fully expect to pay additional pet rent per pet. This is additional revenue that we can capitalize on. So that's something else to consider in this equation. You know, if you if the average house in our market leases for $2,000 a month and we can cut the days on market in half, uh, let's just say that's $1,000 savings. You may be able to generate as much as another $600 to $800 per year in revenue. So do, is that real money? Is that real revenue that can offset damage and costs? Absolutely. Furthermore, regarding the damages, even if someone has paid a pet fee, we're still able to deduct any and all damages from pets from the security deposit, regardless of whether they have paid additional fees. So we can still hit that security deposit if there are damages. For those reasons, uh, if you ask us what is our recommendation, should we allow pets, uh, we do have some scenarios where we may uh, be more inclined than others. Single family homes are, are, are a great place for pets. Um, the type of flooring you have, hardwood flooring is, is typically softer and a little less forgiving. So maybe limiting, um, you know, very large dogs. So there, there are certain considerations that we would make, but our general policy for pets is that two pets is the standard. And so if you're asking for our suggestion, we would suggest that you allow two pets in the home. If you have any questions about this, if we can answer any other questions about pets or anything else, we'd be glad to just reach out to myself or our staff. We would be glad to provide more information.